Mario, Pokemon, Sonic, and Zelda. What do these all have in common? Well obviously all of them are very successful video game franchises, but there's an even deeper hole to dig down. All these franchises are so successful that many have tried to emulate their success. Over the years, different mascots have tried to compete with different ranges of recognition. Some people go even further than that though, and instead, steal a franchise and copy an already existing name. Have you ever wanted to play a new game on an older system, or play a franchise on a rival's console? Well, you can kinda do that. Kinda. Welcome to the world of bootleg gaming, and just like any other industry, there is a chunk of the gaming market that intentionally steals and tries to make a quick buck off anyone they can. While a lot of these games have aged poorly and have been mostly forgotten about, speedrunners have tried their best to do what they do well, giving new life to games. And today, we're going to be hopping from series to series and console to console to tackle the topic of not just playing, but speedrunning bootleg games. So what exactly is a bootleg game? The term bootleg generally describes any unlicensed media or product that steals assets and copyrights and is also typically sold under sketchy circumstances. If you regularly browse online, the most common bootleg game you may hear about is Super Mario 7 Grand Dad, which got heavily memed to death on the internet. You probably saw it at one point or another. Another one you may have seen is the Super Nintendo smash hit, Hong Kong 97, which we'll actually talk about again later. All games mentioned today have one giant thing in common. They did not go through any proper testing or licensing, and all of these were made for getting a quick buck from people who didn't know better. A fourth Donkey Kong Country? That must be pretty good. It's on the NES? Okay? Buckle up, because we're not just going to dissect these awful excuses for games, no 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 no, that's too easy. We're going to go one step above and discuss people who were brave enough to do the unthinkable and put together speedruns for these confusing gaming concoctions. With the wide variety of consoles and characters that have been bootlegged, it can be quite hard to put all the games today in the proper categories but I think that I have done the best that I can. As you will figure out later on, some of these games have overlaps. But let's first start with the easiest and biggest target of bootlegging, Mario. With Mario being one of the few video game characters that even your grandmother knows, it's no shock that he would be the first property to be stolen and slapped on somewhere by bootleg developers. That takes us to our first game today. Kart Fighter. You may instantly think of another game when looking at the title screen, and you wouldn't be weird for doing so. This screen is a direct ripoff of the title screen from Super Mario Kart. For an NES adaptation, this honestly isn't horrible. With Super Mario Kart coming out towards the end of 1992, we can assume that this game came out sometime after. Different sources put this between 1993 and 1994. Dates aside, what the game actually holds is quite different from what the first screen may suggest. Yes, this is a Mario fighting game on the original NES. You could say this is an unofficial precursor to the Super Smash Bros. series. Honestly, for a bootleg, this is pretty cool. It's pretty satisfying to see characters from the Mushroom Kingdom duking it out in 8-bit. This game uses an altered Street Fighter 2 engine with different characters having similar movesets. There is even an option for 5 different difficulties. On speedrun.com, 5 people have run the game in some kind of way. There are categories set up for each playable character that involve you defeating every character in the game back to back. There is also a run that 2 people have done where you combine all the separate character runs together which puts the record at over an hour and a half. Definitely quite a long time to spend playing an unofficial version of Super Smash Bros. 
Continuing with playing Mario on the NES, what if I told you there was a way to play Super Mario World on the original NES instead of the Super Nintendo? Well, you kinda can. Released in 1995, Hummer Team, who also made Kart Fighter, made a port of Super Mario World on the Japanese Famicom. There are many janky parts to it, but for the NES and Famicom era, it's pretty impressive. They even got Yoshi to work on the console, which Nintendo wanted to do since the original Super Mario Bros. They eventually did do that on the NES version of Mario is Missing in 1993, but it's still pretty cool that bootleg developers were able to do it as well. The physics are drastically different from the original Super Mario World, but you can definitely get adjusted to it. The weirdest thing is that if you jump at full speed, you will instantly slow down to a walking pace. The slope physics are also reversed, which means that you gain speed going up, but lose speed going down. That makes sense. They also made spin jumping work by pressing up and A at the same time. There are also two separate versions of the game. Most solo cartridges of the game contain an incomplete variant that only contains the first four worlds. The complete version is mostly found on multi-carts containing tons of other bootleg titles. There is very little information about a separate cartridge made just for this game. I could keep going on and on about little things hidden inside the game, such as an easter egg where if you press up, right, A, down, right, B, up, left, while paused, the logo of the company who published this appears. Moving on, the full version of the game is pretty fleshed out, and remakes levels from every main world in the original game. The complete version has 28 levels across 7 worlds, and over a handful of years, people have tackled beating these levels as quickly as possible. For many years, Super Mario Bros. legend Darbian held the record with a time that he set in late 2014. Multiple people would pick up the game later on in 2017, and the record was lowered by over 10 minutes. There was even a separate category made to beat the game with only Small Mario. Both runs have been so optimized over the years that the current Small Mario record is minutes faster than Darbian's original records that allowed you to grab power-ups. Continuing with Super Mario World, some may know that in Japan, Super Mario World is sometimes referred to as Super Mario Bros. 4. It even says it on the Japanese cartridge, and says it on the title screen of prototypes that were shown in American commercials. Well, there's another Super Mario Bros. 4 to talk about, and this time, it's on the Game Boy. Super Mario 4 for the Game Boy is a bootleg hack of a Japanese platforming game titled Cranshin Chan 4. This hack is a mismatch of many Nintendo properties. The title screen uses the Japanese Super Mario 64 box art, and many sprites are taken from Super Mario Land 2 and Yoshi's Cookie. Yoshi is an in-game power-up, and Donkey Kong is the final boss. The game consists of four really long levels full of blind jumps and required damage boosting. As of making this, only one person by the name Cranky Kong has run the game beating it in just under 10 minutes. For obvious reasons, the real Mario 4 is run by many, many more people. Before continuing on, I just want to quickly say that as of making this video, we are really close to 10,000 subscribers. So if you're enjoying what you're seeing, make sure to subscribe and share the video. It'd be awesome if we were able to hit the goal before the end of the year, and I also have some really exciting announcements for when I hit that said number. Anyways, back to the video. Mario is not even close to the only Nintendo property to be ripped off time and time again. You'll see more and more examples as we go on, but over the years, Donkey Kong has been such a huge target that I'm going to dedicate an entire section just to bootlegs of DK himself. Starting on a high note, let's talk about Donkey Kong Country. No, not the original Super Nintendo trilogy. Not the Game Boy Color, or Advance ports, no. What about Donkey Kong Country 4? No, not on the Super Nintendo, but on the original NES. Yes, this is real. Made by Hummer Team, who made NES Super Mario World, I present Donkey Kong Country 4, an NES port of the original Donkey Kong Country released in 1997. 
This version is very similar to the Game Boy Color port, which I guess makes sense. It's easier to port that to the Famicom rather than the others. This is debatably one of, if not the best bootleg I'll talk about today. With proper boss fights and credits, it's actually really impressive. In terms of speedruns, many strategies and glitches have been found. For example, this out-of-bounds glitch that allows you to swim under the level. Seven people have run the any% category, with Bootleg Pickle having the record with a time of 1434. If you were craving even more Donkey Kong Country, then it's your lucky day. Staying on the NES, released in 1997, Super Donkey Kong 2 is a really short port of Donkey Kong Country 2, Diddy Kong's Quest. By really short, I mean really short. The game has only three levels, which then goes to an ending screen after beating the final one. Many speedrunners have done their best to optimize it. Four people have run any percent on console, and five others have run any percent on emulator. The fastest any percent time is a 223.8 by Liquify. Multiple tool assist runs have also been made, with the fastest being over 10 seconds faster than humans. Believe it or not, there's still a couple more Donkey Kong Country ripoffs to mention. This next one is drastically different from the previous two. Super Donkey Kong 99 is an original game rather than a port, and only takes sprites instead of sealing levels. And secondly, instead of being on a Nintendo console, this is on a Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive. The game lacks a rolling attack, Diddy Kong, and checkpoints. There are five total worlds that each have two stages with a boss fight afterwards. The game weirdly uses some music from Super Mario All-Stars and has a very underwhelming ending screen. There's only been one person to speedrun this by the name Z-Lash, clocking in at over 33 minutes. And maybe after watching this, you'll want to be the second person to run it, but I wouldn't blame you if you didn't want to. Moving back to Nintendo consoles, let's tackle a game that kind of is and isn't Donkey Kong Country. The Panda Prince is a pirated NES port of Donkey Kong Country released in 1996. Some of the music, gameplay, and graphics are taken from the original Super Nintendo release. Panda Prince spans five levels and a boss fight. The final boss is straight up Master Neki from the original game. Three people have done a run, with the fastest time getting just under 3 minutes, which was achieved by Dark Slash 88. But that's not where this story ends. A year later, in 1997, another variant of this game popped up under the name Super Lion King 2. It removes the story at the beginning of the game, and replaces the panda with Simba. This version only has three levels that are a bit different from Panda Prince. The game then ends with the same Neki fight. Two people have run this version, with the record just barely being under 2 minutes by Bootleg Pickle. Switching to something non-Donkey Kong Country, let me present to you the hottest game of the early 2000s. Donkey Kong Country 5, The Journey of Over Space and Time. No, I did not stutter there, that is the actual title. Donkey Kong may be in this game, but this game is not Donkey Kong. This is a clone of Super Mario Bros. Deluxe, with only the first five worlds and horrible controls. This game has many other variants, including Harry Boy in the Chamber of Secrets, and Super Mario Sunshine. I really can't make this up. With the core game being Super Mario Bros., the format of the speedrun is relatively similar. Instead of warping to World 8, you warp to World 5. Besides the controls and physics being way worse, there is also another bug in the game that is abused and allows you to hover in mid-air for longer while jumping. Nine people have run the any% percent category, and two people have run Warpless, which goes through every single level. The current any% percent record is a 501 by Ducktanian, so if you want to get the first sub-5 in the best Mario game to be featured at a Games Done Quick twice, then here's your chance. Moving over to Nintendo's competition, Sega is no stranger to their consoles and properties being bootlegged as well. And while I don't have time to go into the full history, 
All I will say is that Sega has had quite a unique situation in Russia between the fall of the USSR and many legal battles. As recently as the mid to late 2010s, there have been giant surges of Sega console clones and games. The West would gradually get their hands on some of these games, and there are a few unique ones that I want to talk about. The first one I want to tackle is a port of the NES game Felix the Cat, made approximately around 2013. The game is pretty basic and only features 12 levels. That's not what made this game interesting though. When you run out of lives, you have the option to continue, and if you select no or hit, you witness debatably one of the most gruesome images ever seen in a video game. And for the sake of both viewers and monetization, I'm going to censor this, and you can search it up if you really want. But anyways, a few people made this a speedrun, and there's now a 7 way tie of getting to this game over screen as quickly as possible. There are also two other categories, any percent and any percent no skips. There was a glitch discovered across the game, where if you jump high enough at the top of the screen, the level is automatically beaten. This is usable in multiple levels, and makes the skips category over a minute faster. Let's move to a game made from the same developers and around the same time. Released in 2014, LEGO Batman is once again a straight up port. This time, from a LEGO Batman mobile game released on Java platform phones in 2008. Yeah, quite a weird source to rip from. On top of that, the title screen steals Corneria from Star Fox. I will say though, it's quite an awesome Genesis remix. Anyways, three people have done an any percent run of this game, and Jangle Storm has the record with a 722. There are two notable sections in this game, a dark city themed region that I assume is supposed to be Gotham City, and a holiday winter region. Just like you'd expect from Batman, the ending has you save Santa Claus. Yep, pretty faithful Batman recreation. Moving back to Nintendo, I want to go over a wide selection of NES titles that I really couldn't fit into a more specific category. Between the success and accessibility of the console, the NES is one of the biggest targets for unofficial bootleg titles. The first title here is probably the most ambitious of the bunch. In 2004, a team developed an NES port of The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. The game is sadly a bit limited due to this being a downgraded port. Diagonal movements aren't possible, and many game elements were completely changed. Six people have speedrun this port with there being two categories, any percent and 100 percent. The any percent record is around 36 minutes, while the 100 percent one is 44 minutes. There have been multiple tricks discovered that can be used in runs. The most important one being the infinite dash glitch, which allows Link to run way faster than normal. Moving away from Nintendo properties, let's move over to Disney. For some reason, Aladdin has been a heavily targeted Disney property among bootleggers. There are two different Aladdin bootlegs on NES that people have speedrun, and are usually identified by the names of the developers. Let's first tackle the version made by Hummer Team, who made multiple games that we've already talked about. This version is a downgraded port of the Super Nintendo version of Aladdin. It surprisingly has all the original stages, as well as a bonus game. Nine people have done runs of this game, and there are a couple interesting pieces of tech that have been exploited for speedruns. One is a glitch that allows you to walk in the air that makes one level a complete breeze at the end. An even crazier one is with the final boss, which is Jafar. If you have only one health left and get hit, the game gets confused and decides to immediately finish the game, which leads to the ending cutscene. The current record which uses these strategies finishes in under 13 minutes. The other NES Aladdin bootleg that I want to mention is developed by Super Game. This version is a port of the Sega Mega Drive Aladdin game. It only contains 4 levels, which makes the speedrun record under 6 minutes, and has only been run by 2 people. Moving back to Hummer Team, let's tackle some more games developed by them in the late 90s. There's two more NES releases by them that I want to mention. The first one I want to handle is Earthworm Jim 3, which is a port of the Mega Drive Earthworm Jim game. 
This game has three levels that contain two parts each. Just like many of Hummer Team's other ports, this plays surprisingly well for a bootleg demake. It's honestly better than what you'd expect from this type of game. Two people have run this, with Bootleg Pickle finishing this in just over 11 minutes. The last Hummer Team title I want to tackle is Titanic. Not Titanic. Titanic. This is a side-scrolling beat-em-up based on the Titanic movie. This is one of Hummer Team's last releases, coming out in the early 2000s. This game has gotten a lot of interest off and on over the years, and 8 people have optimized this run. With the game only having 5 different sections, the run is pretty short, with the record being a 423. It's been quite a journey, but that's the last Hummer Team release that I have for today. Continuing with the NES, here is Biohazard, released in 2003. This is a pirated game based on Resident Evil for the original PlayStation, and it's surprisingly detailed. It even has 4 different save slots that you can load on the title screen. And like some others on this list, this game hasn't seen too much attention, with Bootleg Pickle being the only runner. That also happens to be the case with Earthworm Jim 2, which is a port more related to the Super Nintendo game. This is not to be confused with another Famicom bootleg by the same name that came out a year later. The only documented time of this has no highlighted video, so sadly, what I'm showing here is not a run, and I don't have too much insight into any strategies used. Continuing the trend of lesser explored bootleg titles, here's Tomb Raider on the Famicom. Not the PlayStation, the Famicom. It's quite an ambitious task, and for that reason, it's definitely not as enjoyable as the game it's trying to rip from. I think what annoys me most is that the entire time, only one song plays, with no other sound being present. I commend Jangle Storm for enduring this for nearly 37 minutes. I personally found watching this to be quite boring, as it mostly seems to be running around and hoping something happens, and some reviewers have said the same. Needless to say, I think I'll skip playing this title. There's still one more NES game that I want to tackle, and fortunately, this one is a bit more interesting. Here is The Lost World Jurassic Park, published in 1998. This is a pirated port of the Jurassic Park game on Super Nintendo. This is a top-down game that also switches to first-person view when entering buildings. You probably won't ever see that first-person view, though, due to a game-breaking glitch that allows you to jump through walls. Twelve people have speedrun this, with the record being 46 seconds. Only one person has run this without breaking the game, which has been done in 15 minutes and requires you to collect all the eggs from the dinosaurs. And that is every NES or Famicom speedrun that I could scrape up in the bootleg bin. That was quite a lot, but the next few categories aren't as intense. Moving over to the Super Nintendo, we have another Aladdin ripoff, titled Aladdin 2000. It's hard to find an exact date of when this was released, but unlike what the title says, a few sources I found suggest that this was put out in the mid-90s. Like many other of these games, this one is also quite short, and only has 5 levels. And man this must be the most broken game I've seen so far. A majority of the run consists of easily clipping through parts of the level, which ends up skipping half the intended gameplay. The beginning of each level is also really confusing. It seems like the starting screen position wasn't programmed properly, and each level has its own wacky introduction where it slowly positions to where the camera should have begun. Only one person has speedrun this, and I'll let the ending sum up how broken and confusing this entire experience is. Mm-mm-mm, now we get into the spiciest territory of bootlegs, Hong Kong 97. 
possibly the only game on a Nintendo system to all at once feature a swear word, have soda branding, and a picture of a dead body. You really can't make this up. This game was developed by a Japanese journalist who made this game in just roughly a week, which supposedly was supposed to mock Nintendo's very strict quality licensing standards back in the day. This game steals so many random assets that you would never think would go together, including Jackie Chan, Bruce Lee, Coca-Cola, and former Chinese leaders. After the long introduction, that I would actually recommend reading if you want a good laugh, you control a character labeled Chin, and try to avoid many types of people who are randomly moving around and shooting projectiles around the screen. After playing for a bit, cars will appear, and after three cars go by, the final boss, Tong Xiaoping appears, which is of course represented by a giant severed head of Ding Xiaoping. Why wouldn't it be? After defeating the boss, the game basically repeats forever in the same fashion. Oh, and if you die, you get a picture of a dead body, so that's nice. Also, sometimes the game randomly puts that image as the background while playing, so that's a nice bonus. Tackling the speedrun side, there's a category dubbed One Cycle, which is pretty self-explanatory. Get through a single cycle of the game as quickly as you can. 26 people have run this, including yours truly. The record currently is a 4-way tie at 35 seconds. I wonder why this never got officially published by Nintendo. Hmm. I know it's really weird to transition away from a game like Hong Kong 97, but let me try my best to reel it back in. The last Super Nintendo bootleg I want to mention today is Pokemon Gold Silver. No, not Pokemon Gold and Silver on the Game Boy Color. This is Pokemon Gold Silver. Released sometime in the 90s, Pokemon Gold Silver is an unwarranted Pokemon platformer on the Super Nintendo, which to this day has no information on who it was made by. The game starts with you either selecting Chokorita or Wananoko? At least Wananoko, which I'm probably butchering, makes sense due to it being a Japanese translation for Totodile, but Chokorita? That's a laughably bad translation error of Chikorita. Anyways, the game engine is similar to some other Pokemon bootlegs, which also have unknown origins. The game consists of four levels and a final boss fight that's Mewtwo. Oh yeah, while well, at the beginning title screen makes you select one character, you can just press select at any time to switch characters. Jojo Retro Gamer does this in their run, and they're the only person to properly run this game in 6 minutes and 13 seconds. In the third and fourth level, Chikorita's flying ability is heavily broken. It doesn't take that long to abuse the flying mechanic to get to the top left of the screen, which ends the level. I think out of all the games today, this one has the best ending screen. Alright, we've done Sega titles, we've tackled Nintendo consoles, so what else is there for me to talk about? Well, there's a whole bootleg scene to talk about on portable consoles as well. The first one is Yunnan Jan Yi 3, which is an attempt at making a game based off the Run and Gun Metal Slug series. And it's hard to find any information about this particular bootleg, and in normal pirated game fashion, it's pretty short. It only has 6 levels and a final boss. The only completed speedrun of this is by Covert Madness, in 5 minutes and 51 seconds. Secondly, there's Dragon Ball Advanced Adventure. I tried so hard to find further information, I probably spent at least a solid hour or two straight trying to find information about this on two separate days, but I just couldn't find anything. The only thing I could find was that the Twitch streamer Vinny from Vine Sauce played this under a stream titled Chinese Game Boy Bootlegs. The only thing I could put together is that it seems to be at least partly based off the Game Boy Advance game with the same name. It's hard to really say how many levels there are because the transitions are really quick and the sections are hard to distinguish between. And this has only been run by two people, with the record being 4 minutes and 34 seconds by Usenald. Sorry if I butchered that. I want to go out of my way and thank the people that contribute to and maintain the Bootleg Games Wiki, which heavily helped me scrape up info on 95% of the games mentioned today. These games have a wide range of origins and trivia, and it's awesome to have one centralized resource to access all of this. So that's it. That was every single pirated bootleg game with a speedrun that I could find on speedrun.com. 
Obviously, the bootleg market as a whole is way bigger than 20 games, and maybe in the future different people will take interest in other unlicensed games and develop their own runs, and maybe I even missed some, let me know. But until then, that's the world of bootleg speedrunning. Quite a wide range of characters and franchises were ripped off between all the games shown today. What surprised you the most? Do you have a bootleg game that you wish people did speedruns of? Or like I said before, do you know a speedrun that I missed here? Well, let me know in the comments below, and I'm happy to hear about anything you want to share. No matter if it's official or not, speedrunners will do what they do best. Beat a game as fast as possible, no matter what it takes to do it. Thank you for watching, and let's hit 10,000 subscribers. And if you're watching this in the future and I'm famous, cool.